I brought my children to SeaWorld th about three years ago, uh, and we went to the Shamu show to be entertained. Very large orca lined up poolside waiting to be fed dead fish with their mouths out. hanging open and so unable to really do anything for themselves. They're completely dependent on human care. So when we went, we wanted to see marine life, like any family would want to, you know, parents want to teach their kids about things other than what's on the dry land. Uh, so that's what we went for. And when we got there, I didn't find it entertaining. I found the lounge music to be very irritating, not only to myself, but I could only imagine what it was like for these orca who have very strong sonar that they manage their way through life. It's like our hearing. And during the show, people were laughing and clapping, and I didn't find it to be entertaining at all. And I left there that night feeling very depressed and wanting to know how I can get involved, because I was under the impression that every animal at SeaWorld were rescues. That's what I thought. But when I did a little research and I found out the truth, I started, I, that's when I found out about Lolita, because I started to dig about collapsed dorsal fin in male captive orca, and it pulled up a plethora of information. And I found Lolita, and I saw the um, Lolita Slave to Entertainment documentary, and at 3 o'clock in the morning I was in tears. And um, knowing that Lolita was here all by herself since, what, 1982, after Hugo, her tank mate, had passed away, living alone and, you know, knowing they live in pods out in the wild uh, really touched me and has started me on this anti-captivity journey. So that's how I started. It was because I'm a mom who wanted to teach her kids, and I realized that that was the wrong thing to do. So um, I, what I did was is I took them on a boating trip to see bottlenose dolphins out in the wild. And we got a very, a very great show out in the wild where they were just foraging and playing and mating and doing things that they do out in the wild without any human disturbance. And so I, you know, the kids loved it. They, they liked it more than SeaWorld. They had a blast on the boat. So um, doing something like that and, and righting my wrong and telling them that this is the way it was supposed to be and not the way it was at SeaWorld, you know, and they have a totally new respect for, for marine mammals now. So I feel that I did the right thing by them. So the information is getting out. As I said, there's a, big, a lot of credit that has to go to the documentaries like The Cove and Blackfish. The show's canceled. That raised uh, the awareness of more people. But we continue to do what we do because that reinforces it. Help for the cause of Lolita and all the other dolphins and whales and for captive animals in general. It wakes people up. It lets them know what's going on. One of the things that I think is very, very important, whales are very, very sentient beings. They're very, very intelligent. They understand captivity. They, they do not need to be in captivity. It's cruelty. And, and I devote my life to that, to free animals, all animals. I've been an activist for three years now. I've been uh, going to Miami Sea Aquarium protests, primate products protests. Uh, we do also home demonstrations, uh, sometimes on the weekends. Um, I just do this out of a passion for loving animals. I've been vegan for approximately three years now, and I, I love coming out every Sunday to support Lolita, to support the cause. It's a great cause. Animals are not ours to wear, they're not ours for entertainment, they're not ours to eat, and the public needs to be aware now, like they were in the past, that the time has come to free any animal in a tank. That's not just Lolita, that's every animal that is in a zoo, that's in this aquarium, in SeaWorld. It's important for people to be educated and know what these animals go through when in captivity. Why they kill, what happens, the death rate, not just for humans, but also the death rate for the animal itself. It's important to speak up for the animal because they can't speak up for themselves. For years and years, most people, not only just American, but all over the world, most people really didn't give it a second thought. They just thought, you know, it's just another animal. And especially with dolphins, the, the shape of their face, their mouth, looks like they're smiling. But the truth of the matter is, they can't change that look on their face. People think, oh, this dolphin is happy here, he's smiling. But if that dolphin were laying dead on the ground right here, it would still look like it was smiling and happy. So people are starting to come around due to pe folks like yourself 
and through uh, Facebook and just through other activists are starting to spread the word. And through the film, uh, if you can uh, find the documentary called Blackfish, I'm sure many people over there have already mentioned it, that exposes what goes behind the scenes and how they're treated, how they're, they, they call it uh, a positive reinforcement by giving them food. All it is is training them to do a stupid trick for food, and if they don't do the trick right, they don't get the food. So it's negative reinforcement. Everybody else is here today to try to put an end to cetacean captivity, cetaceans being uh, uh, marine mammals such as dolphins, orcas, or as other people know them, killer whales, who are extremely intelligent. They live in family groups. They stay together their entire lives. The families never separate from each other. The sons stay with their mothers their entire life. They, they work together as a family to live, to feed, to socialize, to raise their young. And they're, they don't belong in tiny tanks, concrete tanks that are way too small. No, no tank on earth is, is big enough. In, in the wild, we'll swim up 50 to 100 miles a day. We're here, especially in this place in Miami Sea Aquarium, which has the smallest and most dilapidated and, and run-down orca tank in the, in the country. They have, and it's by APHIS standards, is an illegal size tank for a whale Lolita size. But yet they, they refuse to acknowledge it. And they've, she's been here for 44 years. And she's, it, it's been, 44 years too long. She was violently captured in 1968 and ripped away from her parents and her family, along with six other babies. They took the babies, and they took the prettiest of the babies, and then they let the rest go. And you could imagine how you would feel if someone came and took your prettiest baby and put them in a cage for the rest of their life. Lolita the orca should be in there with at least one other animal of her species. Now there was another whale in there many years ago in the same small tank. Can you imagine two killer whales in a tiny tank that size? He would repeatedly ram his head against the side of the tank because it drove him crazy being inside that tank and he eventually d developed a brain aneurysm and he died from it. And now you, if you go in there, his name was Hugo. And he was very unceremoniously hauled out by a crane and taken to the Miami-Dade city dump and dumped his body after making Miami Sea Aquarium millions of dollars. There was, you go inside there, you will see no trace of Hugo, not a photograph, nothing. If you ask about Hugo, the trainers have been told and instructed to give you answers that will throw you off. Hugo earned him countless millions of dollars and his body ended up in a city dump. That's just not right. My definition of humanity is um, treating not only people but animals, um, any, any living being with the respect that they deserve and to respect their own environment and to not invade their environment and just allow them to be them without interfering. You know, to me, that's, you know, a very important part of humanity and compassion and caring for, for others without, you know, being so selfish. It means being kind to all life and all things, not just, not just human life, not just animal life, but to, I believe that's what we're here to do, to, to make life better for everyone and everything, and that includes rocks and trees and mountains and rivers and all the waters and the oceans. That, to me, is humane. In the political climate of today, animal rights are not really the highest priority. As a matter of fact, animal rights activists such as myself have been, uh, and this is hard to believe, are classified as the number one domestic terrorist group in the United States. Domestic terrorists, people who are trying to save the welfare of animals, especially highly intelligent animals, such as uh, uh, primates also, apes, gorillas, chimpanzees, animals that live in families all their life and they stay together just as us humans do. Don't buy a ticket. Don't buy a ticket. You're wasting your money.
the more we can get that out into the uh, this information out to the media, and this is what we do too, the better the better off we are, and the better all the whales and all the animals will be when we bring this uh, uh, documentaries to the media. Activists have jobs. We just volunteer our time. We volunteer our time. We fight for the animals. We fight for the voiceless, and that's why I'm here today. It's a very productive time. As you can see, we already turned down over 25 people. We've been here for about an hour. We already, turned, we already turned around 25 people. I don't think this is a waste of time at all. We, we think of it as educating people, and yes, it's completely worth it.